Hello and welcome to my talk today on advantages of espresso test and our espresso test automation, how and why. So today's agenda, I do feel a little bit odd because I don't have enough of time, but we'll try to go as much as we can pretty fast as we can and also try to see if we can cover as much as we want. But today's agenda, as you can see, we're going to talk about what is UI testing, Android UI test automation, goals of unit testing, flakiness, which is something that we all experience, popular Android UI testing tools, CI, CID tool, CI stroke CD tools, and then my conclusion. But first, before I even do that, I'm going to introduce myself and that's about me. I am a senior Android engineer. I'm also a GDE Android, that is Google Developer and Google Developer Expert for Android. I'm an author, I'm writing my first book, Modern Android 13, Modern Android 13 Development Cookbook, which just talks about Android development and best way of practices. And then I'm also a Women Tech Makers Ambassador. Now, let's jump to my first agenda, which is what is UI testing. So as many of us might know, testing user interaction helps ensure users do not encounter unexpected results or have a poor experience when interacting with your application. So your testing is basically verifying that all functionalities work as expected. And if you're um, an engineer today <clears throat> and listening to this talk, I know you might have written some tests at a time in your life or based on each and every companies. I do know there are companies that don't write tests, but others do pretty insist on writing good tests, even go the route of doing test-driven development testing, that is TDD. But others opt to just not have the test, so it might benefit you, and it, it I'm, I would say others it doesn't. But to me, specifically, I feel like writing tests is very important, and it's very key to making sure that our applications function as expected. Now, so when we talk about approaches, right, we have to approach it. We have the automated testing and the manual testing. So I'm going to go fast and talk about what is actually manual testing. So manual testing is simply having a human tester perform a set of user interaction operations on the target app. And that is by them verifying that when they do a tap, whatever is expected is happening. Now, the target app and verify that it's behaving correctly. The biggest cons of manual testing approach, that is, it can be very time consuming and error prone. Because if you're, I will talk about here, because I'm an Android engineer. If you're an Android engineer, you know very well that it might work on a Samsung and not work on a Pixel. So that is why manual testing is not a very good approach. However, sometimes it does help. And I've actually, I remember I worked for a company before where we did a lot of manual testing and QA did that a lot. Now, my most important topic today was the Android UI test automation. And I wanted to talk about why automation, right? So why test automatically? So an Android app targets thousands of different devices across many APIs level. And if you have deployed your app to the Play Store, you might have seen the various devices targeted. And if, you, if you've done that, if you've built, if you've launched your own application, you might have seen that section. If you've not done yet for your company, when you ever get a chance, you'll see that. But I'm, I'm very sure that many of us might know what I mean by device targeted. This sometimes results to your application not being rendered correctly, hence causing crashes on some devices. Now, UI testing lets you do compatibility testing, verifying the behavior of an app in different contents. And it, this helps us reduce such crashes. Now, you might want to run your UI test on devices that vary in different ways. And that's why I feel like having automation is very important. Now, before I finish up my talk, if I get time, I'll talk about different approaches that we've used that at different companies that I've worked with that have worked because I've always been a champion for testing. Now, let me talk about the scope. Now, tests vary depending on or degree or, or de or the degree of the isolations. Now, we have unit tests or small tests. Now, this is the one that verify a very small portion of the app, such as a method or a class. Now, we also do have end-to-end -end testing or big test that is very fine 
larger parts of the apps at the same time, such as a whole screen or an entire user flow. Now, we also do have medium tests that are in between and check the integration between two or more unit tests, more units. And the scope is very important to know, especially when you're planning or setting up a strategy for your testing in your application, because this will definitely help you make certain decisions and also help if users have, not, not users, but let's say engineers have bandwidth to see on which one they can pick up and make sure that you're deploying the best crash-free cleanup. I know crash-free is, is, is an overstatement because many apps definitely do crash because we, like we mentioned, we have, we target so many devices. So making sure that it's at least less error prone or less crashes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what, when I mentioned UI testing, I want to talk about the UI testing suits. Some of the features included in UI tests suites are, let's say, functional testing. And um, what is functional testing? So functional testing is like, does my app do what it's supposed to do? Now, we do have performance testing, right? Does it do it quickly and efficiently? We have accessibility testing, which is very important now that we have to support accessibility. I know this is something that before, actually, honestly, to be fair, when I was building my first application back in 2014, I didn't think about accessibility testing, but now it's very important. It's something that maybe we overlooked back in the days that now needs to not be overlooked. So accessibility testing, does it work well with accessibility services? Now, compatibility testing too, does it work well on every device? and API level. And I feel like when I mentioned this, this is a particular issue encountered actually at work where we had a particular issue with only Samsung tab A and every other phone worked okay and, 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 and pixels. But we had a particular issue with Samsung, with Samsung tabs A, which is interesting. Now, as I mentioned here, as you can see the functionality, the, fu the functional testing, and then we also have the performance testing, make sure we have accessibility and then uh, visual design. Let me see. And then accessibility. Now, so here I want to talk about a little bit of the test cases, right? And the reason as to why I wanted to kind of like just gauge this conversation before we even go deeper is why is testing important? That's the question we're asking ourselves. So why is the testing important? Why test your UI or why test uh, some pieces of your some pieces of your code? Now, so as you can see here, I have a user action, which is something that it's very important to test. And I'm going to give a few examples. So here, I'm going to give a few essential test cases that UI te tend to verify. Because I remember before I've defined what testing is, you are testing is, but what exactly are you verifying? So something that you might want to verify is, let's say, the data type errors that the test checks that only valid data can be entered for certain data fields, such as date, currency. And I actually mentioned currency because I remember when I was building my app budgeting buddy, I had a very difficult time figuring out if people can enter any particular. So not, not even that. People would enter like more than more than I think 10, 10 inputs, and that would make the app crash. So we also need to make sure that we have, we check the field width, the test checks that certain text fields do not allow the users to place input of a specific character. We also need to test navigational elements, which is very important. The test checks that all the navigation buttons on a page are working as expected. And when, and that's the idea, that is by the redirect users to the right page. For instance, if you have a login flow, you want to make sure that if people enter the username and password and they click login, it navigates the correct screen. And also important to test is the state. It's very important to test the state. Just make sure that if there's a progress, once it's done, what happens next? Now, we do have a couple of, and this is mostly for Android, and also I'll talk about others. So for, for what I've done at work, we have framework that provide APIs for writing UI tests. That is Expresso testing framework, Jetpack Composite, the new, which is the new UI 
toolkit for Android. We have UI Automator. We have Robo, Robo Electric too. Now, I wanted to go back a little bit and talk about the instrumented versus the local test, right? So you can run tests on Android devices or any other computer, right? But instrumented tests run on, a, or run on an Android device, either physical or an emulator. If you've used, if you read an Android apps, you might have used an emulator or your physical device. Now, that is the app is installed, is built and installed alongside a test app that injects commands and reads that state instrumented tests. I usually UI test launching an app, then interacting with, with it. Now, what are local tests? Local tests execute on your development machine or server. So they're also called hot site tests. They're usually small, fast, isolating the subject and a test from the rest of the app. Now, not all unit tests are local tests and not all end-to-end -end tests run on, run, run, on, run on a device. Now, for example, we can have big local tests. You can run in Android simulators that run locally, such as Robo, Robo Electric, it helps a lot. And then we do have the small instrument tests that you can verify that your code works with a framework feature. And this is such as when you have, you're using like a, a database, right? And you wanna make sure that all, everything is being inserted or updated. Cause sometimes it's good to verify that actually your database works as, ex as expected. Now, um, one thing that I wanted to, to showcase a little bit also in this is how actually are we writing tests now as Android engineers in our day-to-day -day coding? And as you can see here, we this is a way that now it's encouraged and a credit to the documentation on, um, what is it called? On developers.google for Android, you, you'll find examples on how you can actually test your code. And then also how you can write the test where we have, we create this composed rule test that, and then you set content. And then if you are very fine that let's say your state is loading, that the loading is happening, you can verify that and check that it, it actually is dis displayed. Now. Before that, we used to use XML, which is kind of like similar where we have on view and then you capture that view and then you perform the inputs you want to and then you can display the particular, you can as check that it matches or is displayed. So I wanted to show this code to chat, just show the difference that we have now because we are moving away from XML and now starting to write more of Jetpack Compose. Many companies are now adapting to that and also knowing how you can write pretty clean UI tests might be very helpful. Something also very important is that despite us having or us moving from you moving from RX, I know many companies still use RX and that's why I, I added a little bit of code on also how you can do testing in with RX. And um, you can use the test method to get a test observer and you can make a session on and you can do it like this, where you await completion or what count of value emitted, and then a set a sequence and item expected. And also you can you can assert a timeout did did not happen, a certain expected error was raised. So these are ways that you can actually verify that particular portion of your code are working as expected. Now, here as you can see, I wanted to share a little bit of how you can. Um, run your, you can definitely run your, use the instrumentation and instrumentation registry, which are low level APIs, typically used by higher level test frameworks. So it is mostly recommended for direct use by most test, tests. Now, uh, this one, definitely this is the new way Way of doing it we test rule where we get we, we have a rule and we create let's say uh, the activity class that we, we are targeting and then if you want to navigate to or if you want to so this is where you let's say you have an input user input insert let's say username and password and then you tap navigate to and it takes you to a different particular screen now let's talk about goals for testing and 
Oh, I know I have, I have 10, 10. <laughs> Let's talk about goals for testing. I'll try to skim through most of, most of it. So, okay. So first of all, the goals of testing is test small units of your code and to validate their behavior. Make sure you promote good design where there's loose coupling and also avoid fragile code bases and promote sustainable growth of the project. Now, some guidelines that I always look into or want to strive to while testing is don't alter global state or reset it if you must to avoid flakiness in other tests and should not, rec should not communicate with the external systems such as fake mocks, server calls. I know there's a big debate over fakes and mocks. And uh, I know if any Android engineer is listening, definitely that's a big hot topic. Now, keep business logic, of course, out of the views. View models can be pure unit tests with no Android dependencies, although robotic is okay if needed, because I do know there are different kind of use cases. Now, some other guidelines too is don't test private method, just public interfaces. Uh, code to an interface, not an implementation, more flexibility of tests, doubles versus forced to mock. Unit tests should run fast as to they can be run frequently and easily. Now, take advantage of Lang methods, names, and Kotlin just to make sure that your tests are pretty readable. That is also, I thought this would be also important to, to mention because sometimes I think you might enter a code base and you're like, what, was being, what, what, what were we trying to test here where you're not able to understand? But having a very clear, well-named particular Method really helps a lot for function. Now, I want to talk about a little bit about flak flakiness. Now, flakiness and, synchroniz and synchronization. Now, now, the synchronous nature of mobile application and frameworks often makes it challenging to write reliable and re repeatable tests. Now, when a user enters an event, when a user event is injected and tasting, the framework must wait for the app to finish reacting to it. Now, which could range from changing some text on screen or completing recreation of an activity. Now, when a test doesn't have like um, specified behavior or I would call it de deterministic behavior, it becomes flaky. Now, the issue can still arise when you run a sequence or background operation unknown to the test, such as loading data from the database or showing infinite animation, which is something that we kind of like forgets from time to time. Now. To make sure that we increase reliability to our to our test suites, we can always install a way to track background operations such as express so idling resources, which is something that I really spent time trying to investigate because we really had flaky tests. Now, you can also replace module for testing versions that can query idleness so that you can improve a synchronization such as test dispatchers for coroutine or Rx idlers for for Rx Java. I wanted to mention flakiness because I know this is something that we really struggle a lot with. Now, one thing that I also want to mention, I give props to also the Android, to developers.android, the Google page, where it gives a good clear definition of what we should wait, what we should be listening to and how we should be testing the correct functionalities. And they do set a warning where you should avoid posting your test for an arbitrary period that is like using a thread. Because I know I've seen a couple of mostly on GitHub projects where you would see thread.sleep. So because that might cause a little bit of flakiness. So um, another thing I wanted to mention is definitely the popular you popular you tools we use that is there's the espresso, calabash. UI Automator, Detox, and uh, Monkey or App Crawler. And this is mostly used for, like, used for testing. Now, popularly used, which is Espresso now for us Android. So uh, Espresso is famous UI testing framework. It's a post Android application from 2.3 onward. It requires access to the source code, and it has box testing features. Now, some advantages of using espresso test that is fast and reliable testing it can test web component building test recorder active service and team it does testing in such a way that components are isolated and this makes it makes it this makes other activities or components available to work to work on 
I don't know how we are doing on time. <laughs> now, something else I want to, I also want to mention is, um, um, some advantage, some disadvantages of using Espresso is it runs on application at a time. Test cases can only be for Android. Test cases are only written in either Java or Kotlin and deep understanding is definitely required. I do see we run out of time and I wanted to give a time for Q&A. I do see I might have some question. Um, not sure how I see the questions. Um, as we find the question so that I can see if I can... Uh, Hello, I see um, I see a question. Hey, Madonna, can you talk about testing navigation? How can you verify that an activity or a fragment or a fragment was opened? I'm using Espresso and I could not think of a smart approach. Now, one thing I would definitely recommend is there are documentation on how you can test, like starting like using navigation. Are you if you're using the navigation components, they're definitely great, great um, what do they call documentation where you can launch using launch with fragment i remember that there's a, fun, there's a method you can you can call and then you can pass in whatever you whatever class you want to pass and then you can verify that with id it navigates to that particular app uh, like when you perform a click which is let's say if it's a button or if it's a text once the once you perform a click on it it navigates to that particular screen that you want to navigate to but i can definitely offer some code snippets on that but there's a, there's great documentation on that for sure that's what i would say and you, yes, you can use Espresso for that. I hope that answered your question. And also, please make sure you can connect with me on my, my LinkedIn so that I can also sh share more solution on that. Now, I'm going to jump and talk about the CNCD tools, which I think they're pretty important. Like we have Bitrise. We have Circle CI, the GitHub Actions, and the Travis, and other more. That I see another question came in. Test flexing with Espresso. What are the ways to? Yes. Now, that's a very good point, and that's why I even had a particular. Let me go back to this slide. It is indeed true, we do encounter a lot of flakiness with tests. And this is it. I did create, on, on the slides I have, I've created, um, I've created a very great, uh, let's say, link, which can actually showcase how you can handle flakiness and where you can actually look into more of how to make sure that your app is not very flaky all the time. Because I need, I know this sometimes slows down your process, especially if you're waiting for, for it to build and then you have to, for it, it has to pass so that you can go to the next, I mean, it has to pass so that your PR can be approved. So what I would say definitely is reach out to me through the community chat and I'll send all the feedback and I'll share the slides too, because I think we're out of time. So, 